Good morning, church. Hey, thanks for tuning in again this week. So glad you're joining me this morning. Wanted to talk with you for a few moments this morning about prayer. I know we are in desperate need in our country. We are in desperate need in our church and in our homes uh, of prayer. But unfortunately for a lot of us, we just don't know how to pray. Unfortunately for a lot of us, we just feel like we don't have the time. Or when we try to pray, we get so frustrated because we are consumed with everything going on around us. We're easily distracted. For a lot of us, we've been shared with and given examples uh, from those that have gone on before us in a faith of, of lengthy prayers, of, of spending uh, a lot of time in prayer. And we just don't feel like we can do that. And so we get discouraged. And for many of us, we just don't pray. And that's unfortunate because I believe, and hopefully we affirm, the fact that prayer matters. Prayer changes things. God wants us to have conversation with him. That's what prayer is. And so it's my prayer that over the next several Sundays, as we are journeying through the prayers of Jesus, we would learn from his example ways in which we can pray, and we will collectively uh, become a stronger uh, church will become stronger in our homes we will become a stronger force that is being christ-like in in a broken fallen world so let's look to uh probably the most famous prayer uh the first prayer of jesus that we're going to look at in this series and that is uh, the lord's prayer found in matthew chapter 6 i'm going to read uh, verse 9 through 13 this then is how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That is a prayer literally taught to us by Jesus. He says, this is how you ought to pray. That should come of great comfort because one, it's the words of Jesus. And two, it's a short prayer. Jesus even clarified by saying, you don't have to get out in public and pray long prayers with big words like you've heard time and time again. No, you can pray this simple prayer. It's short. It's easy. You can memorize it. And you can pray this daily. But listen, there's nothing simple about it. This prayer is powerful. And I want to challenge you, church, if you would join me in praying this prayer and meaning this prayer, every day, you will begin to see, I promise you, you'll begin to see how God will transform your circumstances. Maybe not everything that's happening around you, but within you, God will begin to transform you. And then you'll see that transformation begin to spill out into your home. Uh, we'll begin to see that spill out into our church. And yes, it will begin to flow out into the community. And I promise you, change and transformation will happen in our communities if we really truly believe this prayer as we pray it. There are seven petitions that I briefly want to look at this morning, seven petitions in this prayer that I'm going to challenge you to join me in praying. The first petition is that God's name might be holy. He, Jesus says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, your name is holy. Well, the focus then remains on God's identity and, and God's actions, not ours. So if you're going to sincerely pray this prayer, you've got to get yourself out of the way. And we start this prayer by saying, you know what, God, you're holy. And we want that to be made known today in this world. So how is God's name then made holy? Here's how God's name is made holy. By gathering people, by cleansing them from their sin, and by giving them a new spirit. That is how God's holiness is made known in the world. So if you are going to sincerely pray that prayer, you then have to gather, you have to seek forgiveness of your sins, and then you need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. So if you are not willing to gather, if you're holding on to sin, if you're frustrating the Spirit, then you need to pray this prayer and mean it. That is how God's holiness is made known in the world. It's an us thing. See, 
God's holiness isn't made known necessarily through uh, one street preacher or through a book. No, God's holiness is made known through community, through the gathering of people where collectively we can see sin, people can see sins forgiven, and they can see communities being transformed by the Holy Spirit. This isn't a Lone Ranger kind of a prayer. This is a, this Jesus affirming from the very onset of this prayer that this is a we thing, an us thing. The second and third petitions continue focusing on God by saying, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. See, if we pray for God's kingdom to come, we are asking that God's power to create will prevail over forces that want to destroy. That his power to redeem will bring release from bondage. That's what we pray for when we want his kingdom to come. See, God is in the creation business. I'm evident of that. You're evident of that. If God just left creation at the beginning and left it alone, we wouldn't be here. But God is about creation, new life, new human life, but new life in, in the midst of darkness. That's what we pray for when we want his kingdom to come. So if you're really going to pray that, how is it that you and I and we can today see his power create over the power of destruction? How can we see God's power today through us redeem over the power of evil and bondage? If we also pray for his will to be done, then we are praying that, that his life-giving purposes will be carried out through us. Listen, are you negative right now? Are you spreading fear? Are, are people wanting to quickly get away from your social media accounts? They, they don't spend a lot of time talking to you over the phone or in person because you're just mean and nasty and everything is woe is me and troublesome. Then where's the life giving in that? No, we collectively, even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of uncertainty within what's happening uh within our country and, and politics, we can still be life givers. I am afraid to say I'm just not seeing that, but we should be seeing that. And if we're praying this prayer and meaning it, then we need to be about it. The fourth petition uh, continues to reinforce the us by saying, give us this day our daily bread. See, our, our lives rely on what God gives to us. And then it's our job to be good stewards of those gifts. See, a lot of us question how can a loving God uh, allow hunger and famine in the world? I, I hear where you're coming from, but maybe we shouldn't question how can God allow that? Remember, evil is all around us, but God doesn't want that. And God's given the, the resources and the gifts enough that that shouldn't exist. So rather than questioning how can God allow this, maybe you need to question how can I allow this? Right? How can we allow this? See, that's the problem with the church is that we, we become so selfish and we hoard God's blessings and God's gifts because we're afraid that they might not be there tomorrow. And guess what? Tomorrow you might not physically have those, those blessings in your life. But God's plan is that I, if I do, I share with you. And, if one, and then if the next day they're not there for me, but you have that surplus, you share and bless me. But see, we've seen that, that model broken sometime way back when, and now we're afraid and we, we hoard. Trust me, I see it. I'm reading your Facebook posts. <laughs> I, I get those messages that you send me of conspiracy theories, and, and we're so afraid. And what's it saying? Begin to gather up that stuff. Hang on to that stuff. Right? I'm not worried about... And, you know, what's happening around me? I have my weapons. If, if I need food, I'm coming to your house to steal it. Look, that's not, that's not Christ-like. That's not what we should be praying about. If I have it, then it's mine and yours. And in turn, if you have it, then it's yours and mine too. We should be blessing each other. Give us this day our daily bread. The fifth petition says, forgive our debts as we also have forgiven debtors. See, relationships are messy. We get hurt, and don't deny it, we hurt others. You're human. I'm human. We do that. We've been hurt, and we continue to hurt. Here, Jesus uses the word forgive, which literally means release. 
See, to, to forgive someone does not mean that what has transpired does not matter. That's not what's happened, not what I'm saying. It does not mean that it still doesn't hurt. You probably are still being hurt from things that have happened in the past. What forgiveness does mean is that we have to release the past from defining the present. That pain matters. That pain has shaped you. But listen, if you don't release it, then it's going to continue to define you. But if you release that pain, then today it does not have to define you. And what you are saying by releasing that is that you say, all right, God, I'm open to a different future. I'm ready for you to bless. See, forgiveness is designed to bring change. I'm telling you right now, the church desperately needs to pray this petition. We've got to let go of some things. I'm... For many of you, you probably need to make a phone call. You need to send a letter. You need to forgive someone in the past. But for a lot of us collectively as a church, we've got to let go of the past. Because if we don't, it's going to define us. And God's creating something new today and hanging on to that past. We're going to miss it. And I hear that in your, your laments today. You're so desperate to hang on to what you've known back there. But maybe God is saying, hey, just let it go. And allow me to work and reveal something new to you. I've said it before. Some of us as, a, as Christians only know God in a building. And we hang on to a building. And maybe God is saying, hey, just release it. I'm not saying that building's not valuable. I'm not saying you haven't put a lot of hard work into that building. But maybe just release it. Because what if I want to do something new with you in your home? What if I want you to... To release a building and get out into the streets and have church there. It's radical. I'm not saying I'm putting a for sale sign out front. I'm just saying that's I see what it's like. We we hang on to, we've come through those battles of, of worship wars and these battles of carpet colors and these and now our new battles are masks and and freedoms and really? What if God is saying, hey, let that stuff go. I'm, I'm working something new here. The sixth and seventh petitions are asking God to help us overcome temptation and get away as far away as possible from evil. See, the issue with the sixth petition is that we affirm that God does not tempt people to sin. James 1.13 tells us that. However, God does call us to be salt and light in a broken and fallen dark world. In other words, if you constantly avoid being around sin, then who are you sharing the love of Christ with? The prayer is that, that you would have the strength enough to avoid the temptation of sin and that you are surrounded by it because you purposely surrounded yourself by that because you're going out and you're continuing to be salt and light. The prayer says, I need the strength to, to avoid that. I'm not saying God is tempting me, although I do think God is challenging us to, to go. And there is going to be temptation all around us. But we are asking God, give us the strength to avoid that temptation. And then allow us to flee from evil. Not flee literally running away from sinners and locking ourselves in the safety of our homes and our churches. No, flee literally on the spot. As you still have your arm around a sinner, flee from that sin. You can be in the presence of a sinner and sin and still be light and still be salt. Listen, don't avoid the dark circumstances. Pray for the strength to overcome those. Because this is an us thing. A we thing. Not us and no more, but us and let's continue to watch the us and we grow. Well, we've got to get out there and meet those people. We've got to get out there and live amongst those people. We've got to get out there and bless people to bring them into an understanding, a knowledge of who God is. And the opportunity to receive his son, our Savior, into their lives. It starts with our prayer daily. A simple, short prayer that we can memorize. But if we truly understand what's going on here, and we mean it, then God is really going to transform your life, your home, our church community, and the communities in which we live, work, and play.